Hey everyone, what's up, what's going on? My name's Joe, and this is How Many Fingers Am I Holding Up? A drunk weekly movie review podcast. And on this week's episode, we're gonna be reviewing Aquaman. But first, we have just one announcement. And that one announcement is The Handies. That's right, move over to the Academy Awards because we have our very own The Handy Awards, an annual film awards ceremony that our podcast has been putting on for three years now. And the best part is that you, our listeners, are essentially our Academy, which means you guys get to decide who takes home the handy and who goes home crying. And we've got all the big categories like, you know, best picture, best actor, and best director, but we've also got these categories that are very unique to the podcast, like best episode, or best guest, and even best host. But you have to hurry, because voting closes this upcoming Monday, February 11th, 2019. So all you need to do to vote is visit one of our many social media handles and vote in the comments by using the hashtag GiveAHandy2. It's that easy, so go, quickly, and vote. But first, and finally, <laughs> our review of Aquaman. Enjoy. Welcome to How Many Fingers Am I Holding Up, featuring two guys getting sloshed and reviewing movies in a weekly podcast form. And thank you to Bill Rines on Facebook for leaving us that synonym for uh, getting drunk. Oh, and thank you, Bill. That's one of those ones that I thought we would have had already. Yeah. Slosh, that seems... sworn we said sloshed like three times by now. But, uh... It's like, it's also one of those ones that makes me think like there might be a finite amount of... <laughs> synonyms that we can eventually come up with this and we're just going to run out at some point oh yeah and and oh god what happens then i I don't know i mean by all means contribute your synonyms to all social media but uh, yeah help help us race to our eventual end (laughs) you guys are gonna have to come up (laughs) the faster you submit them the sooner this podcast will be over (laughs) (laughs) oh boy but yeah here we here we are again Skyping it up. Yep. It's uh, uh 10:49 p.m. during the middle of the week. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh god, we we're we're some busy boys, but we're we're making it work. Yeah. Uh to get you know, these episodes out. There, uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of things I'd like to say about this episode, but let's let's uh let's crack it up in these uh these brews real quick. Oh, yes. Uh, what what so, are you drinking, Mike? I'm drinking a variety of beers from Trogues mm-hmm. Independent Brewing. Uh, I bought one of their like 12 pack variety ones. It's got like four different beers. Oh, nice. uh, but currently, I'm drinking the number 351 Cranberry Porter Ooh. from their Scratch series. Yeah, I bought. I brought some of these. We were at like a, a Super Bowl party uh-huh. uh, this weekend, and I brought some of those. Like one of each, and I was like, kind of hesitant to try this one because it sounded like the worst of all of them. Right. So I saved it uh, for the end. Then it actually turned out to be like the best of all four of them. Mm. Like something about cranberry porter just sounds unappealing to me. It just sounds like it would be like sludgy and syrupy and oh, yeah. whatnot. But this is like a pretty light porter, and the fruit taste is like very subtle. It's not like a novelty taste at all. It's just a good porter. Good job. Great job. <laughs> <laughs> and what what about you, my good friend Joe? Uh, well, I am. Oh yeah. Ooh. Uh, uh, saw that volume spike. Um. Wow. More chubby from that sound. Yeah, I, I. I don't know how this audio file is going to be, Mike. Uh, all of a sudden, <laughs> my audio just seems to be working now. Uh, oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> Uh, but I am drinking uh, Platforms uh, Seeing Sounds. 
Uh, I don't know. It was on sale. Seeing, seeing sounds, not tasting sounds. Oh no, you're, we're seeing sounds. We're seeing sounds yeah. as we taste the beer. How is it? it? Tastes like an IPA. I don't know. I can't distinguish between. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I I know how you feel about this. You know what? I that is such a that is I feel like that's just such a an older kind of it's oh, have a new you come me- around. Yeah, I I like IPAs now. So uh even like like the really really hoppy ones? Yeah. Or have you just have you just tried IPAs I of think, different varieties that you like and you've brought in your horizons? Yeah. I I don't know. Yeah, I, I think I've just experienced, I think I just had a very small scope of beers that I would drink before this podcast. And again, much like the synonyms, since we're not trying to repeat synonyms, we're not trying to repeat these beers. And uh, the more beers I try, the more open-minded I become. So, oh, well, I don't that's know. That's a good thing. Right, yeah. I've acquired a taste for IPAs. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. I just I don't like fucking uh, what are the thick ones? <laughs> <laughs> guy, guy on the beer what, podcast. What, what, hey, yo, what are those thick beers? What are the thick ones? <laughs> what like a stout? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's almost in the name. Yeah, yeah. One might say. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, let me read this IMDb description, then we can talk about Aquaman. I mean, I can just go into it. <laughs> Are you there? Yeah, yeah I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> I was like, this is the joy of doing a Skype conversation. <laughs> I can't see what Joe's doing, so I put something out there and expect a response. Oh, I thought you were <laughs> just, just going to go right into reading it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this is this is the banter you come to this podcast for. Okay, Arthur Curry, the human-born heir to the underwater kingdom of Atlantis, goes on a quest to prevent a war between the worlds of ocean and land. That he there does. you go. Are you happy? Yeah, Mike, I'm listening and I'm <laughs> hearing you. And uh, <laughs> Aquaman was directed by James Wan. James Wan has directed Saw, uh, Insidious, The Conjuring, Insidious Chapter 2, Furious 7, and uh, The Conjuring 2. Um, so Aquaman... See how it feels? It's <laughs> 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 just silence on the other end. <laughs> the screenplay is written by David Leslie, Johnson uh, McGoldrick, and Will Beal from a story from Jeff Johns. Uh, it stars the title <laughs> I character. I love that name. Go on. What? <laughs> so I just love that name. Jeff Johns. <laughs> just, just plain old Jeff Johns. Um, I stars... wish it was spelled with a J, with a J though. <laughs> oh, most definitely. JJ? <laughs> yeah. J- <laughs> Jeff Johns. <laughs> um. But yes, yeah, there stars uh, Jason Momoa as the title character with uh, Amber Heard, Willem Dafoe, Patrick Wilson, Dolph Lundgren, and Yaha Abdul Mateen II, and Nicole mm. Kidman in supporting roles. Um, I think I posted this uh, recently, and, and I think it, it had a, a large influence of why we're going to be recording this movie. Um, the film. I think at this point, I don't know if this is the most updated thing. I, it just keeps going up and up. But the film has grossed over $1.1 billion worldwide, becoming the highest grossing DCEU film, as well as the highest grossing film based on a DC Comics character, surpassing uh, The Dark Knight Rises. Uh, it is also the fifth highest grossing film of 2018, and the 23rd highest grossing film of all time. That's kind of crazy that it's only 5th of 2018. What was above it? Star Wars, Avengers, I guess Black Panther probably. Did Black Panther break a bill? Um, I don't know. Let me... Uh, yeah, I mean, I, 
you don't need to find the answers right now. I'm just throwing questions out. Okay, Black Panther, Avengers Infinity War, Incredibles 2, and Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. Oh, that's um, right. Jurassic World did make bank. Solo, a Star Wars story, is at, is at number 10 for the year. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and that's domestic. <clears throat> uh, if you uh, pop over to Worldwide... Man, I, I I always think I know how to navigate uh, Box Office Mojo, but I really don't. Uh, oh, it's still in fifth at uh, Worldwide Gross. Um, mm. So, what do you know? Uh, but anyway, I, I know it, it, you know, it did like 29% domestic and 70.8%, uh, you know, uh, overseas. Yeah, no um, real surprise there. <laughs> it's, it's a real, I mean, granted, it's only like, um like three percent more like three percent more overseas than avengers infinity war um you know and you know uh, really just two percent more than jurassic world uh obviously uh i think like i've said before i think black panther did really well here and i don't think they quite got it as much but it was still just a superhero movie that did well i think black panther is still the top film for domestic of 2018. For, uh, oh, domestic okay. and yeah. then worldwide is a uh, infinity war yeah um, but everything else seems to kind of be the same um except uh hold on solo is number 23 worldwide so oh wow that did even work well, do, well don't the star wars movies not do so well worldwide yeah, that's something they've been trying to fix. But I mean, Star Wars was like in the top three, I think, last year. I don't know. It's it's uh, that might not have been worldwide. Yeah. Um, like those ones kill domestically because Star Wars is a distinctly pretty American thing. But my God, A Star Is Born did better worldwide than Solo. That's pretty <laughs> bad. Then Lady Gaga, The Nun, almost did as good as Solo. Uh, worldwide yeah so solo didn't do well um but anyway let's talk about aquaman yes let's i mean aquaman as a character i feel like has kind of been like this meme of the comic book universe like (laughs) just like he's you know like just picture like the the cartoon kind of aquaman like like you can especially see like kind of like robot chicken i think he's kind of been like a like a punching bag and in like the dc universe with robot chicken and everything and i think to like dc's credit i have seen like my local comic book store over the past few years they always um i don't know i'll look at you know aquaman and it seems like they've rebooted the character and he seems more um like aspirational um and much like this movie they kind of double down on his like king of atlantis status which i feel like they never really used to do and um i don't know yeah we, and like we, the old yeah. like like the cartoon he was like the guy that was just like riding sharks around <laughs> <laughs> and mm-hmm. stuff he was real goofy and his superpowers are always just goofy because he was talking to fish and right. communicating with fish and stuff mm-hmm. like that and uh, I, I'm, again, I'm not like an Aquaman historian or even a, a DC historian, but I don't remember there being a whole lot of emphasis on like, like usually when you have like a character like, uh, you know, from DC, like Superman, like Superman is sort of feeling out of place, even though he's this otherworldly thing. And uh, on like Marvel side, you sort of get that with like Thor, um, but he right. does feel this like, you know, compulsion to help humankind. I don't really remember there being a lot of like exploring of that through the Aquaman character. He just kind of seems like he was just a like tool for like Justice League. <laughs> like, oh, like we need like the water guy to help right. us with certain scenarios and stuff. And yeah, and I've always, I mean, I I do think there is a difference between DC and uh, Marvel. Um, I think where Marvel is kind of just kind of. Uh, uh, you know, I'm a regular guy who got bit by a spider, and now I'm superhuman. Where I think a lot of DCs, like they kind of have this theme of like, no, I'm a god amongst men, 
kind of, you yeah. know, just kind of. Or I'm like, an alien or I'm something. Right. Or... Yeah. And it's, uh, they're different. And I, I think this movie kind of does that well. Um, but yeah, I mean, we've reviewed um, Justice League. You can check that out. I mean, DC Films has also kind of taken, you know, in addition to DC Comics, DC Films has taken this interesting approach to Aquaman, where they casted Jason Momoa, who we've seen in Game of Thrones, and I still think that's his best role to date. I don't know what else he's done, really, Um, but he's kind of this kind of like irreverent surfer bro character. From Maine. (laughs) <laughs> yeah right he, right like why did they not move the character to like california or hawaii or something or just he has like a very like pacific islander vibe kind of thing um, well, i think he might literally be hawaiian right jason um, momoa that is yeah um, but even just the way the character is written which is kind of just playing into jason momoa's sort of personality himself mm-hmm. um yeah, it's very much like, hey, dude, whatever. Like, yeah, bro. Like, that's a distinctly not Maine way <laughs> of carrying oneself. Maine has a very particular type of person up there, especially on the coast. Mm-hmm. Um, and the, the the character, like, in this movie was, like, raised <coughs> on the coast by a native um, Maine or Main Mainanite, whatever you call <laughs> someone from the state of Maine. Uh-huh. So like, uh, th- there's no like attempt at like even like an accent. Which I mean, I also I sort of understand because it is a global movie. But like at the same, like just move it to somewhere a little bit more understandable, like California or Hawaii or any or Florida even. <laughs> right. Yeah. Somewhere, yeah. somewhere on an actual surfing beach rather than you know like a a, a fishing coast. Yeah. No, I get that. Um, I don't know. I guess I guess I can kind of see the casting too. With his dad is like Django Fett, or uh, isn't that what he was? He was Django Fett, right? The dad. Maybe. I think yeah. it was two different actors: the old one and the young one. Oh no! I think that's just. Uh, I think that's like aging. Uh, really. Software. Yeah. Oh, they did a good job then. Uh, yeah, no, definitely. They, and then they did a terrible job with Nicole Kidman because she just looks the same age the entire movie. Yeah. They kind of just like put like a white wig. Dude, this movie in wigs, like, uh, I, I was watching like some behind At the, the same st- time, isn't she also like literally old? Like maybe she just is like a hard person to age. Yeah, no. that she, She's 51 years old, so <laughs> she might just be a hard person to make look old. <laughs> yeah definitely i mean I, they they definitely do something to her in the beginning where it's kind of this yeah they smooth her out a little bit right uh to make her look younger but then older her i think they just kind of put like a white wig on her kind of mm-hmm. and that's about it where they with Django fett they they really they do some like really uh they age him significantly uh maybe yeah, because he's well, in take more his hair away and right yeah, I did literally think it was a, a different actor because um, w- they like his face is like thinner in the beginning, and mm-hmm. then it's like a little bit like uh, chubbier in the older version. Right, and I, I don't think- know if I don't know if they thinned the real actor or if they chubbied up the real actor. I think they thinned, and I think I I don't know. I think the beginning that might be a wig. I I don't I don't really know. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I don't know. Wigs in this movie don't look great. And there's a lot of them. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Um, I'm still, I don't know. Uh, you saw this last night, right? Yeah, I saw this last night. Okay. Um, my theater experience was that there was literally just a couple behind me. Um, and I don't totally know if they're paying attention to this movie. So, like, it, I had no gauge like i could not gauge like an audience or whatever we're Mm -hmm. also like reviewing this movie like uh well well after a month of this movie being out Um, yeah it's not it's not top of the box office anymore glass has been at the top for the past couple of weekends right and um yeah which which i guess uh will also i mean just a note i i it's kind of funny i i remember uh nick 
Solo, our uh, our other guest was like, "Oh man, every time I watch a trailer for like Aquaman, I know that you guys will have to review that." And I like laugh to myself. You guys will have to like actually watch that. <laughs> I think uh, Sabri's friend Caitlin, who has also been a guest on this podcast, uh, said the same thing. She was like, "Oh no, I saw." the trailer for Aquaman and it was so terrible and I can't believe you guys have to review that and it's like I found myself being like no no it's like an Oscar season and we're probably just not going to get to it or whatever and that was kind of uh that was kind of the decision up until sometime last week where we had already I, I think the Oscars were just so predictable And also just so not totally embedded in the Oscar season where we're kind of like, whoa, we got to see all these movies last minute because they just came out January 1st. Yeah, Um, yeah, they're a little more spread out this year. Uh You had some like like actual um, blockbuster movies Mm -hmm. up for the Oscar this year. Black Panther? You know, Black Panther was like the second movie we reviewed this year. Yeah, Mm -hmm. mm-hmm. I was just thinking about that. We reviewed Black Panther the night that we watched the oscars that's crazy yeah that's true yep Mm -hmm. um but yeah uh i don't know i I, again join how many fingers am i holding up the facebook group but it was a discussion i posted an article and i was like you know we've kind of been ragging on aquaman and uh I, i i think i think we were ragging on it like uh like, oh, Amazon Prime members get to watch this like a week early. And, you know, oh, there was like a six minute trailer that they cut of like Aquaman. And we're all just kind of like making fun of it. But then it, it came out and it, it made, like I said before, it has a gigantic box office presence. Whether that yeah. might be, you know, worldwide uh, or overseas or whatever, it's still, it did. I think it's like, it's the combination of like, worldwide appeal because it's this like bright colorful movie right that like it's i mean it almost just looks like something that would be produced in like india or china or something like that Mm -hmm. um just like the the aesthetic of it all it looks very different from a lot of other superhero movies that we see put out and then i think like domestically you just have that like jason momoa pull that like like i remember thinking like man like is is this really gonna like, who, are there really enough Jason Momoa fans to drive this movie on its own? Right. Because, like, obviously, like, Amber Heard's not really doing that. I don't think there's enough people, like, standing Nicole Kidman anymore that they're going to come out just for her. Like, it really would have to be just Jason Momoa's pull right. as sort of, like, a object of sex appeal. Um, and I think this uh, opening obviously proved that that's a, <laughs> a pretty big deal Yeah. Uh, in, in the minds of uh, audiences. Like it's kind of akin to like like a like a Channing Tatum moving movie, sorry, opening. Yeah, and that's that's something. It's ironic that um, we really didn't know what these last two movies of the year we were going to review were, but then we did our uh, live episode at the um, South Street Cinema in Philadelphia um, a week or two ago, and I think we talked pretty extensively about Aquaman without seeing mm-hmm. it. And we even mentioned uh, Spider Verse, uh, which uh, Kevin Petajan, one of our uh, guests, brought up. And those are the two movies that we're reviewing uh, yep. as the last two of the season. Um, but yeah, I, I think we joked about kind of like the horny moms kind of going. <laughs> 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 but um, I think it's also just because I, I think like. Like when Star Wars releases like a movie at the end of December, it's kind of like we have to remember it's not just Oscar season. It's kind of like home for the holiday season. And it's kind of like, you know, <laughs> awkward families that are like, uh, I don't know. We so, don't know what to do with each other. So let's so, go see. So what do you, yeah. So what do you want to go? And then, you know, obviously something like Star Wars where the parents are reminiscent and the kids are still interested in. Or, I mean, like this, it's just kind of like Solo left this fucking, or just, yeah, the release of Solo in the summer, like, left this huge gap in December. Um, yeah. And I think, uh, what's it called? Aquaman was able to, you know, capitalize on that. And it was just kind of like, 
again, maybe it was horny moms buying tickets for their kids who are just kind of like, <laughs> I don't know, we're on winter break. Like, let's go see Aquaman or, it's, or just, I don't know. It looked like a family fun adventure movie for everybody as opposed to like, uh, I don't know, let's watch Bradley Cooper kill himself. You know, I'm like, you're just kind of <laughs> like, <laughs> um, you know, it's get in the van, kids. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad you're home that we can watch Bradley Cooper kill himself together. <laughs> Nothing brings us together as a family more than watching B. Coops off himself in the garage. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> oh, I, um, I was watching the Golden Globes. It just, uh, Savory's parents were like visiting and i think we're watching like an eagles game or whatever and then right after the golden globes just started playing and then sabri's dad is like super into movies and they see a lot of movies so we just started watching the golden globes i thought um andy sarenberg's like one joke i laughed very hard at he was like (laughs) now welcoming like bradley cooper and lady gaga he discovered her in like a you know in a bar and she discovered him in the garage <laughs> <laughs> i missed i missed like half of the opening i didn't hear that <laughs> oh it was really good um <laughs> uh, anyway let's like uh not to use a bad pun but let's dive in oh boy to walk <laughs> here we go <laughs> uh so to maybe like uh, zoom in a little bit more than we have been on this movie. Yeah. I, I want to compare it a lot to Black Panther. Uh-huh. Cause I think the setup is kind of similar where Definitely. Black Panther was this character that we had introduced in uh Captain America Civil War. Mm-hmm. Right? Not Avengers, Captain America Civil War. Right. Um and in that instance, like Black Panther, as we talked about at length in the Black Panther episode, was like way more compelling in civil war in this like smaller dose was given more compelling circumstances. And then he kind of falls short at least individually as a character in a standalone movie, even if Mm -hmm. the rest of the cast sort of tries to pick that movie up. Right. And I feel like this is sort of similar um, to maybe like a a more dull degree, but like we have, uh, you know, Aquaman introduced as a character and he gets this whole opening and introduction and, reveal in the justice league movie and it i don't think was as compelling as black panther in civil war but it wasn't like the worst thing ever like i think we all kind of enjoyed aquaman as a character in justice league from what i remember like you were kind of laughing at him but it it was definitely a little bit goofy but it was also fun and it was just kind of yeah he was this irreverent kind of (laughs) main surfer bro even though that juxtaposition is just weird all i um, remember it, him about him from justice league is just like hoorah you know just <laughs> like, just, <laughs> like that was it yeah but he was pretty well defined and it like worked yeah and he had this sort of storyline of being like the reluctant hero um that really cared more about his life on land mm-hmm. than this sort of thing that he knew about uh underneath the sea and i feel like rather than like like black panther like completely changed what the sort of storyline was like in civil war he's got this um you know like revenge plot of trying to figure out who killed his father and i think that's pretty compelling and then they just totally remove that in the standalone movie and he doesn't really have anything to do he's just kind of worried about being the best leader he can be which is just not really relatable or super fun in my opinion to watch right. but in Aquaman they just kind of repeat the same story like it, it he's already been established as this reluctant hero who overcomes that to be part of like the Justice League and like work to defeat Steppenwolf and save the world from everything and have a great time doing it and then they kind of just do the same thing here where like he goes back to being reluctant and I think it, it Amber Heard is in Justice League right am I crazy or Right? Is she the one? She the one that pulls him down. The first time. Yes, 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 yes. Right. So then it's literally the same thing. He's reluctant yes. again. She comes back and has to convince him yet mm-hmm. again that he's needed and his powers are for good and whatnot. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's. Yeah. It's. I. I thought the same thing because there are a lot 
of uh, especially just the kind of advanced civilizations that are hidden from the rest of the world and yeah. you know oh the the first kind or just like the kind of like archaic kind of or tribal kind of like well you got to fight me to be king in this very advanced society you know kind of uh, yeah there thing. was um, Parts and, where it, it literally feels mirrored a Black Panther, like right. that you're saying, and then there's literally like seven tribes, mm -hmm. and like all of them have to like come together to like right declare who the king is and whatnot. Right. Well, I mean, this, I mean, that fight was just for Atlantis, and then I think the whole, you know, I, there's just so many fucking details of this fucking movie. Um, but yeah, it's um I forgot what I was gonna say. But um There's also definitely some kind of like comparison to be made about like like obviously like Black Panther is this culturally uh significant movie right. for um I, I don't know what the proper way to say this is, but I think everyone understands what I'm getting at. And Aquaman is like the mirror image of that, but for like white people and it all looks so fucking goofy. <laughs> Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> like, um, like in Black Panther, like you have all these crazy, cool costume designs, and everyone's got these unique, you know, crazy makeup and hair done, and all looks just like super great and fascinating and fun to watch. Like you really can't like hate on any like the costume design from Black Panther, mm -hmm. and it's all got cultural importance behind like the designations that they make as well. But then this, like, you've got like. Patrick Wilson and Willem Dafoe just looking the goofiest that anyone has ever looked in a movie before with like their hair like drawn back into like a fin basically behind their head. Oh, like, yeah. Oh, I remember seeing that in the trailer and being like, what are they thinking with this? I don't like, I, I don't even, I don't care if that's how they looked in the comics. You can't put that on screen. But this, I don't know this, uh, and okay, I I, I kind of remember what I was gonna say. Um, I I think when I when I saw the kind of like Manta storyline, <coughs> where I was just kind of like, oh, okay, um, I like this, and maybe we should just have this and not the kind of diplomatic storyline with the brother, where the brother, you know, the Patrick Wilson, where he like hates Jason Momoa. But then he also has to get, like, the kind of cosign from, like, three other nations that are underwater to attack people on land. Uh-huh. Which is crazy and convoluted and just kind of like a plot device because he, they just kind of don't seem like they fucking care at all either. Or he doesn't care. Yeah, um, I didn't really. I I think they have super uncompelling vict uh, villains in this, rather. But um, I I think if you took out the King Orm thing and you just had the the Manta storyline, I think it would just be Black Panther. I think it would just literally be Black Panther because Manta is just the uh, Killmonger, you know, basically. Yeah, but there is um, the power struggle in like. Manta right. doesn't yes. want to be king. Yes. Mm -hmm. Killmonger just wants, wants to be to king. Kill. Yeah, he's yeah, just a they kind of split. Hero, they kind yeah. of split Killmonger into King Orin and Manta Ray. It's very true. Um, the villain. The villains are just so bad in this, though. Like Manta Ray, I think might be one of the worst villains we've ever had in a superhero movie. Like I would put it below Steppenwolf almost, because at least Steppenwolf was like, you know, he was his problem was that he looked goofy as shit like the, the cgi was awful right. um but it was he was really just your, your run-of-the-mill villain you know like he literally is like a big blue laser in the sky that wants to dominate the earth and and whatnot and like but manta ray is just like goofy i think and unrelatable and really poorly acted and so poorly designed like he looks like a fucking power ranger like when he gets into his like big costume thing and like i like how they almost like try to like uh explain it when he like is testing out the helmet with the like lasers coming out of it and he says uh 
you know, oh, I think I need a bigger helmet. <laughs> No. And then he ends up looking like a uh, Alpha from Power Rangers uh, with his yeah. whole costume. That, and like, like I don't know, his his acting is so bad. I don't know who this guy is. I've never seen him in anything before, as far as I know. That like uh, <laughs> that like Depeche Mode uh, song, and they use it as like a montage of him building. Uh, yeah, <laughs> the the costume that was such a ridiculous scene. Um, he's like spray painting it black i uh, yeah uh that's so I, I i don't totally know where the purpose of that is where he gets this he gets the technology and then he's just kind of like all right well now i gotta build into something my own and then we don't really understand like where he has the know-how to do something like this even though you know it's it's just kind of like yeah like let's, he's established as about, like, like a, the, a the pirate opening. and like yeah. a, i mean you the, know, obviously the, like a killer right but there's we never are established any kind of science background right where he is again kind of it'd be like somebody in black panther kind of like dismantling this like wakanda um you know technology into like their own kind of it, it's just I, I don't know. It, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And then, like, yeah, the the stuff with his father in the beginning is just like, just kind of like a mess of exposition where he's like, oh, "I never yeah. told you," but yada yada yada. Take this, take this blade, and they called him Manta, and it was just kind of like, yeah, like that's that's the fucking submarine that you guys rode in on is shaped like a Manta. He <laughs> gets it, like you know. <laughs> it's just kind of oh, it was just it was kind of like dad we're in the middle of a mission like maybe maybe you could tell me this another time like yeah um and, and that was the dad that we just saw in uh if beale street could talk michael beach who's so yeah, good in that that's and true. then like mm-hmm. i mean i think he's just poorly I, w- I wouldn't say poorly cast he just shouldn't have taken this role he should he should have been smarter than to uh sign up for this but you know what? I think I, everyone's I, I, here to get their paycheck, and I that's, don't. That's true. Don't totally blame them for that. Yeah, but I think the Manta Ray actor is like legitimately awful, because um, in yeah. like the, the dad's like death scene, like he just has some like. They also they film it so poorly. The cinematography choices in this are so bad. Like they literally have him like r- like scream in like slow motion, like a, some kind of like goofy like no. When his dad is like trying to like set off the grenade so he can leave um and just that whole scene like leading up like everything about the beginning of this movie i think is pretty whack like especially aquaman sort of reveal like he looks really goofy when he's like lifting the submarine and whatnot and he's just kind of like swimming around with jeans underwater but mm-hmm. no shirt like that's a weird kind of look and get up um Maybe he's self-conscious about his thighs, but not his upper body. Uh, but then he, like, when he's in there, they, they, they sort of try to, I feel like they're trying to go for something similar to, like, Spider-Man 1, like the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man, mm-hmm. where, like, he lets something bad happen early on in the movie, and it kind of drives him later. But they just sort of let Aquaman let something bad happen, and they don't really follow up on it too much, mm-hmm. like, thematically. Like, like in Spider-Man... It's established really well because, um, you know, he, he's sort of doing it as like a, 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 a fuck you to the guy that screwed him over um, right. at the wrestling match. He didn't give him the money. And it's the whole like iconic, like, uh, you know, I forgot the part where that's my problem. And then it fucks him over immediately because his Uncle Ben ends up getting killed. And that's sort of what like drives him to become like Spider-Man for good is mm-hmm. like, oh, man, like people out there are doing this stuff and I let it happen and I have these powers and. It makes him think on Uncle Ben's words of like, with great power comes great responsibility. But in this, like, again, we already just had Justice League where Aquaman, like, gets over being the reluctant hero and uses right. his powers for good. And then now he, like, we're back to, he's like, he's using his powers for good, but he has the whole, like, well, you guys got yourself into this mess. You can get yourself out of it, even though he could save both of them so easily and whatnot. And he just lets the guy die. And then, like, the only sort of consequence is that it, it creates Manta Ray. 
but like Manta Ray is so like in the background of this movie, like we really spend more of our focus on King Orin. And then mm-hmm. the only time it comes back is when Aquaman has that like random like moment of like uh, sort of like pouring his heart out to the oh I can't remember the character's name, but Amber Heard's character on the boat where he's just kind of like randomly like, oh yeah, like I I let someone die and it created Manta Ray and you could have got hurt and that's really messed up that that happened and I can't let that happen again. Like it it doesn't seem integral to his character at all. Right. It doesn't seem tied in to any of the themes of this movie, which it has very few and attempts very few. It just it feels clunky and stupid and it was a stupid scene to begin with. And it it also like it, I'm going to go on a rant about this, but like it, it it is like anti what we want from like a superhero movie. Like superhero movies are supposed to be this sort of like wish fulfillment of like, you know, if I had these kind of powers, like not only like, oh, would it be cool to be f- to flying around, but like wouldn't it be cool to be someone with uncompromising morals who could always be a force of good and always be helping people. Um, And you can sort of establish that and then play against it. But to open a movie up like Aquaman's, you know, establishing movie with him already like compromising his morals and being kind of a jackass and letting someone die unnecessarily. That's kind of a weird choice. I think part of, and it, part of, and it, part of it, me gets it. It's just kind of like in Batman Begins where he's like, I don't need to kill you, but I don't need to save you kind of thing. Uh-huh. Um, Batman's a whole different type of superhero, well, most, though. Most, I mean, most, he is. De- most definitely. And I, I do think <laughs> literally the worst part of this movie is when he is on the uh, boat with, uh, what's her name? And he says, and he kind of reflects on that. Yeah. I was just kind of like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, it, like, it, it is, it's, yeah. it's so out of nowhere in the movie that it almost, I know it's not their intention, but it like gives the impression that he's like, like feigning sentimentality just to like get in her pants or something like, Oh shit. Like I, I got to say something like deep and touching or she's never going to fuck me. <laughs> right. Right. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I honestly, and I got super distracted for a minute because apparently he is, um, one of, he's just like, I, I, for the new HBO Watchmen series, uh, the guy who plays, uh, Manta, uh, apparently he's like the main character of Watchmen. Ooh. Yeah, so not great. Hopefully um, it was just really bad directing and an awful script and awful camera work. That's what this. I'm thinking. <laughs> um, yeah, and I think his name is just, I, I think the the character is just Manta and then he, I don't know, at some point he just calls him he just yells out that he wants everyone to call him black manta um but then i don't know none of the real you know like imdb and wikipedia doesn't really follow suit um i don't know i'm just gonna call him manta (laughs) (laughs) call me black manta um (laughs) but anyway um yeah i i don't know i kind of like his I kind of like his suit design, honestly. I mean, oh I, no, I, Joe. I see. I I don't like how we get there, but um, you know, I think I think his suit design is a. He, he, does, I, he looks like a fucking DJ. <laughs> he looks like fucking Dead Mouse or something without the ears. Um, yeah, but I I I don't know. I saw when I saw the kind of where are they Sicily or. Um, yep. Yes. Yeah, okay. Uh, I saw the Sicily like scene in the trailer. I kind of thought that was the only cool part. I don't know. I think he looked. I think that's like a cool uh, character design. And I think I think there's a lot worse things happening in this movie than that. Like the fucking like helmet that Patrick Wilson puts on near the end. Um, I think uh, there's just there's so many other things i think uh where manta where where they give him like when they're giving like um what's it called when they're doing some sort of like weapons trade with him and they give him like a gun and they're like oh this is experimental like it turns water into like plasma energy or whatever and then he shoots like a rock in the ocean like that is some of the worst 
the most terribly designed prop I have seen. Oh, ever. I think this movie has some of the worst production design of the year in movies. Yeah, and like it, 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 the entire thing looks like a Power Rangers movie, and not like the current Power <laughs> Rangers movie. Like mm-hmm. it looks like the stock footage, like Japanese game show that they used to make dub over and make power rangers in the 90s and i mean i i do remember like james Wan being um i think when the 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 short list for um for like the oscars visual effects was released and james Wan was like it's a fucking shame that like aquaman like visual effects wasn't um you know it is not even on the short list and part of me understood that like when you have like that one scene with the um uh the you know like the kind of like <laughs> it's just, it's just like one of the seven nations or whatever it's like the lovecraftian like monsters that come on board um mm. and again i kind of think that's when like james wan is kind of like flexing his um like horror uh past kind of like that kind of actually made me like jump in my seat when like the first one kind of jumps onto the boat um it's such a weird tonal shift it, though oh, this movie's so definitely. long definitely oh yeah but but anyway uh you know they fucking dwell in the darkness of the sea or whatever and then they need the the flare or whatever when they jump into the water and they go straight down and these things are swirling around them. There's so many like really great wide shots that look like fucking like Michelangelo paintings. I think you could submit that to the Oscars and I think they could take you seriously. I don't know what I I'm just guessing like what they actually submitted was just kind of like, whoa, cool, Atlantis. It looks exactly like Pandora. Like, you know, just yeah. or just like it looks like exactly like Gungan City from fucking Phantom Menace. Like, you know, like it's just it's like um, I, I, I don't know. I think that's such an incredible I, I don't know. I think that scene is such an incredible looking like that's one of the best looking things I've seen this year. Yeah, um, I don't know. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna disagree with you. There's a lot I right. didn't like about the way this but, movie looked, oh but God. I was also you, able to look at it through the lens of like, oh, this movie yeah. literally isn't made for me or even anyone else in America. It's clearly designed to be a global movie, oh, just yeah. in like the, the color scheme of everything going through. And like, when I say it looks like a Power Rangers movie, like Power Rangers is also like, you know, it it's a global property because it was like pulled from Japanese like. Uh, you know, a, a Japanese like uh, karate sh- karate is probably not the right word, but kung fu or something show right. from whatever and dubbed over like, and that's what gives it that sort of like global look to it. And that's exactly what I think Aquaman was going for. I think they knew that like the DC universe is kind of struggling, <laughs> and th- th- what we've been doing before is maybe a little bit too convoluted and isn't working. Let's just focus on like visuals to kind of prop up this weak character and if we make it look bright and loud and like crazy enough it's going to do well globally regardless of whether it's actually a strong movie or not emotionally oh definitely um yeah i would i would really love to know like how much say james wan had with this movie Mm -hmm. um i don't know just because i think he's such an interesting director and again he's done just so many like really small budget horror films and then he did furious seven um it kind of it reminded me a little bit of last jedi too yeah yeah like those because like the the new knights that they had put my finger on it yeah were they the knights of ren or whatever they were Uh i don't think that's the the right term i think there's something else The, the the guards for uh snoke in his like palace during the, the one the big lightsaber right fight um i don't know if they are knights of ren i know knights of ren are right. a thing but mm-hmm. i don't know if we've actually seen them in the universe yet i could be wrong though it doesn't matter the, the the red guys that have like the sort of like samurai looking armor on them but they're just like one tone of red the entire way through just kind of with like a high gloss on them and there was a lot of costume designing this that was just kind of like mono color or monotone 
Like mm-hmm. it would just be like the the one robots that were like basically white. They had like a little bit of like the blue because they're like electronics were water based and there was like water holding him inside of them and whatnot. And like all of like Manta and his henchmen were just like totally black besides like some like red lights. Like there just wasn't a lot of shades of anything. It was just one color, usually like high gloss. And it was just kind of like, like, yeah, just like different like links of armor all yeah. in the same color tone the atlantis you know the character like the white characters that you're talking about the like atlantis uh guys and they are like the most common henchmen in and there was uh, red ones too right in this i don't know exactly I, I i know white ones go after um nicole kidman in the beginning and then yeah. the white ones come for them in sicily and i know white ones come for them in that air pocket kind of and i kind of laughed every time they're on screen because they kind of look like halo characters kind yeah, of like they're, they're just goofy yeah they're, they're just goofy i like and i like the character design kind of but like i was also like come on like do something like it's just somebody's not carrying their weight and I don't know whether that's costume or that's like, but I do um, I, again. Like, that's why I say like, we're, there's. Mm-hmm. I do think it was almost intentional. I think there's something about it that looks global. It's not specifically mm-hmm. American, right? Um, in its design, where we tend to go for I think like darker type things or maybe busier type things. And I think like making it simpler and like almost cleaner in that way. Mm-hmm. And, and like it look like they looked like a fucking like apple product almost at times <laughs> I, but i think I, that's i think that's intentional that's so much about this movie i feel like i have a hard time criticizing it i mean i am and i will but i right. I, I can tell i can tell that a lot of it is by design intentionally a lot of the things that i hate about it I was because so, it's, it's not meant for me i was so confused by the kind of like those characters in particular I mean, like, when we get to the Sicily scene, or we get to, uh, I mean, like, when they're coming after Nicole Kidman, because they're just getting beat, beaten the shit out of, but they have these helmets that are kind of preserving their kind of amphibian forms, you know, because they need to be in water at all times. Well, yeah, because I think and, they said only, only the highborns can breathe on land. Oh, okay, see. There's some I weird, missed, it's some weird poorly, I, poorly yeah. um, established... Like they say it once or twice, but uh-huh. like I don't know, we didn't get into who are highborns and who are not. Like there's some kind of class thing going on. Okay, and that's that's weird, just because that's like in Atlantis or whatever, and that's that's like a whole, you know. And then there's like different evolutions in Atlantis, and then there's like also you know seven or five other nations that are just kind of like. And you know they evolved into weird stuff too. You know, um, there's the the one race that looked so goofy, and I hated every time they were on screen. They looked like the Zoras from uh, Zelda, but not like the full grown ones. The like the princess, uh, what is her name? Princess something, but she's like the little not fully grown Zora that you have to rescue from the belly. And like the it's like the third temple when you're a kid. In Ocarina of Time, <laughs> I can kind of picture it. Wait, wait, which one are you talking about? The uh... they were the ones they were they were practical effects. They were people with makeup on, and it looked real goofy. They were uh, kind of like fish okay. looking people. Oh, the were they just like literally called the fishermen? I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I kind of liked them when they did like an establishing shot of them in the beginning, and then yeah, when they had like the scene where they were like the third people that they went after not the last people but they're third people yeah. and um <laughs> the crab people were the last people <laughs> yeah and uh patrick wilson was like you're all fucking like poets and you know <laughs> like just <laughs> he says i don't know it, it was just like really like yeah, okay we get it um yeah i don't know they they were they were kind of goofy looking, and then they like bled like green blood or something. It was, just, <laughs> it was real. I don't. Th- so much of this movie is just um, 
I, I was cracking up. Like Red Letter Media was like, <laughs> like why is Aqua, why is the Aquaman or why does an Aquaman movie need to be the same length as like two thousand one, like a uh, space? Oh Odyssey. my god, dude! Like, I was, was just kind of fighting off sleep at the end of this movie. I mean, it, it was partially my fault. I saw a late showing on Saturday mm-hmm. that like it started at ten oh five. So like after trailers, it's not until like ten oh, thirty that the yeah. movie's going. Uh-huh. And I, I definitely just get tired earlier now. But it didn't uh-huh. help that it was like it's an introductory movie to a character that we haven't really started to care about. Like, there's no reason for an introductory movie to a character to be two and a half hours long. Like, it should just be a clean an hour and a half in and out. Simple story. Help us like the character more so that we'll come back and entertain you when you want to do a two and a half hour movie. Right, right. Um if it's two and a half hours for the first movie for a character as a standalone, then you're doing too much. Obviously. I don't know why the studio can't see that just on the screenplay level of like when they're, (laughs) when they get to 223 pages or 123 pages, rather 143. Sorry. My math is is awful right now. (laughs) No, yeah, no, it's fine. Um, It it is just kind of like, I mean, if we want to expand upon, the whole like oh it's like black panther it's like this it's like that there's there's really like 18 different movies i think this like kind of borrows heavily from um i i think it definitely like like we were talking about kind of this kind of uh dc you know heroes are gods kind of complex i i think it definitely borrows from that and then i think there's also kind of like this like element from like thor in it or there's this element from like lord of the rings or um just kind of like it's mythical there's there's one true king you know yeah. or just oh my kind god of, they repeat you, you, that you, line so much right or, the or, one or, true king and it doesn't feel like theirs it feels right. like they're stealing that from something uh-huh. else or i he, couldn't put he, my finger on it he literally kind of pulls like a sword from a stone even you know yeah um which is just so weird um i have, it's, I have it's, so it's also, much that i want to it's it's also like fucking incredible it's like a fucking it's an epic like but it's just for like an again like you said like like an introductory character movie like you know yeah. it's it's a full on like, like I said, Lord of the Rings, because by the fucking end, it's this full on fucking war between all these races, like in this mythical world. It's just like, it's complete chaos. And you're just kind of like, I, I, don't, I, I don't really have any stakes in this. Like, what's going yeah. on? Yeah, it's. And we never really totally get the sense that like Aquaman fully cares either. Oh yeah, even at the end, because he's so <laughs> he detached in the beginning. King and he's like him, him getting attached fun. to it. Yeah, like, <laughs> it's like yeah. oh cool. <laughs> um, yeah, and it's like like to compare it to another like uh, DC movie. Like Wonder Woman kind of had the same problem where, or in theory, on paper, where it, she was established in Batman v Superman, and then mm-hmm. she had to go back and do her own standalone movie. And as much as I have like a lot of problems with wonder woman and a lot of that has to do with, it was just like insanely overhyped. And I feel like we were putting it on at this pedestal that it didn't really earn of its own volition. It was kind of just the same in my opinion as most other bad superhero movies or Mm -hmm. at least average superhero movies. Wonder Woman's at least very charming, like wonder woman, the character and wonder woman, the movie, like I I can sort of understand people falling in love with wonder woman the movie and it, maybe it's not a totally a fair comparison because i don't know too many people who totally fell in love with aquaman but just to compare them or contrast them rather like aquaman is not charming at all in this like i thought he might have been a little bit charming in justice league as right. a character like i kind of enjoyed when he was on screen i thought he added a lot of nice comic relief even though that whole movie was kind of like comic relief versus batman <laughs> in the movie um, but in this, like, I, I I think he really struggles to be a leading man, Jason yeah, Momoa. Like, definitely. I think he, 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 he struggles with the poorly, and they are poorly written, but, like, the, the punchlines in this, like, especially on that first, like, submarine scene, like, it's just hard to, like, totally gauge, like, his character and 
the sort of like pace of his humor feels kind of off and it like none of it seems like fully written into like he almost like he's like delivering lines that almost like make more sense for like spider-man to deliver right rather than aquaman who like was established in justice league as being more um maybe not irreverent is the word but just not really caring he seems because like, like De- Deadpool, deadpool, different deadpool is irreverent deadpool like, is irreverent yeah. and spider-man is irreverent like right. but they they're they care about making those jokes almost like that's their character whereas like uh aquaman from justice league kind of just seems like you know just fucking leave me alone like i just want to drink at the bar in maine i don't want to be bothered with this shit and he does i mean just jason momoa himself seems like he's acting in a different movie than like everybody else in this movie you know like it's just he seems like like he's having way too much fun he's well yeah he's just like on his own planet Kind of. Um, like yeah, there's the one scene where he like jumps out of the the plane after um, Amber Heard's character, and he does like a like a high pitched like scream uh-huh. when he jumps out. And I can I can just like totally see that being like his decision on set, and everyone else just being like, okay, like, I guess that's kind of funny. Let's go with that. Like that doesn't seem like something that someone told him to do. You know, like. Yeah, luckily he's not yeah. really in the room, like the same room, or sharing a lot of dialogue with like somebody like Willem Dafoe. Even though Willem Dafoe is not great in this movie, dude, I was cracking up at the um, <laughs> the uh, like younger Jason Momoa. Oh my god! Who's um, uh, they kind of like dive, uh, you know, there's there's these kind of flashbacks. Uh, Jason Momoa, like younger Jason Momoa, you know, in the aquarium, which is, you know, we see that in the trailer. It's a god awful scene, and those fucking kids From that they fucking that they, bullies. Yeah, god, oh, movies yeah. just love bullies. <laughs> yeah, and then um, uh, where he's training, kind of like this maybe teenager Jason Momoa, kind of, and um, I don't know, he's doing the fucking stupid you know it ends up becoming like some dumb mr miyagi thing where he's just kind of like do the spin move it's just the most lackluster like spinning your fucking staff move (laughs) um but um he also like teaches them like they dive off of uh, a high cliff like into the water and then um jason momoa like teenager is like wow we can talk underwater and then Willem Dafoe, like, <laughs> just cracking up. He's like, that's not the only thing we can do underwater. And I was just like, what? <laughs> 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 but then he, like, does that, like, speed swim thing. <laughs> yeah. It's just the water up. boost. <laughs> you know, that's not the only thing we can do underwater, bud. <laughs> <I> just, <laughs> um, now that you're of age. <laughs> you're just like man this is a really weird mentor um (laughs) why don't you come over here and rub my fin hair (laughs) um i got this got this extra stronghold gel in here (laughs) (laughs) Uh, it's it's just like careful it's sharp i mean we're in spoilers whatever you might see this movie you might not see this movie I, I don't totally understand like Willem Dafoe's um, allegiance to Jason Momoa. Oh, it feels like there's a good hour cut out of this movie, despite yeah. the two and a half hour length. Because I think we get such little exposition into um, oh Mara is the name, right? Mira or Mara? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that sounds familiar. Um, like, because <coughs> I don't remember like anything being explained. Maybe it was from justice league and they just didn't bring it back but that's also bad writing as well but i don't remember there being anything explained about her being married to or betrothed to patrick wilson oh yeah well i i think that's that's a that's something that they that's like a reveal in this movie definitely i guess but she's just so poorly established all over (laughs) that like yeah like i don't like they have like one line about her being princess they or also, whatever they, they also kind of i just don't know we have no too, idea what yeah. the dynamic is about uh, underneath the water 
<laughs> like, I feel like they do a pretty good job of being like, oh, like, by the end, you're just kind of like, just Momo is like, hey, like, I'm a, I'm a fuck this, I'm a fuck Amber Heard. And then, uh, Patrick Wilson's like, I'm your half brother and that's my wife. <laughs> like, <laughs> I feel like that's never said in this movie. It's just kind of like, hey, man. <laughs> <laughs> Like, you're not Jason really Mo- helping your case here jason <laughs> yeah yeah like jason momoa like he even has that line at the end where he's just kind of like hey man when you're ready to talk i'm here hey little brother like i always dreamed about meeting you and then like <laughs> patrick wilson has to be like yeah i never dreamed of you fucking my wife <laughs> 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 just like, <laughs> like, uh, <clears throat> yeah i just i felt like that was some weird decision that was thrown in there like they Correct. again like they, they 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 do such a poor job of establishing everything that like it's not even fully fleshed out like i think it's supposed to be sort of understood that it's like an arranged marriage and she obviously is not in love with him or even if she chooses to marry him it's out of some sort of like deceitful like you know infiltration type thing because she is part of this like rebellion underneath the sea Type thing, is but she even I just feel like she's independently rebellious, kind of. And then well, yeah, also, I, don't think I, some... I think Nicole Kidman. I mean, I think the whole reason she meets like the land dweller or whatever, Jason Momoa's dad, is because she had like an arranged marriage. And I, I picture Amber Heard kind of having the same thing where it's an arranged marriage, and you know that's why. yeah. I mean, because yeah. she's she's a princess. She's the daughter right. of uh, Dolph Lundgren's mm-hmm. character, so I guess you could see them being um, arranged in that way. I don't know. It was mm-hmm. just it, I felt like we were like coming into everything like in the middle of something. I felt like we we missed a lot of scenes before that. And I, I mean, I, I, I also can't really fault the movie because they definitely don't need any more scenes in this movie. Oh, yeah. It just seems like a flawed uh, movie from the page. I feel like this. I was reading in this like Roger Ebert review. It was just kind of like, <laughs> like if you want to know what you're getting into, like one of the first like scenes where there's kind of like a face off between like two of the nations underwater like there's like seahorses like whinnying and like sharks roaring it's kind of like yeah like welcome to fucking like spongebob squarepants logic like you're not gonna find like a whole lot of (laughs) (laughs) realism in this movie yeah it's just it's like just weird and out of control um the movie also like there's a fucking octopus playing drums in this movie oh my (laughs) god yeah i remember someone It's been so long since this movie came out. I remember that being like a thing on Twitter, like people who were sort of bashing the movie being like, you know what? An octopus literally plays a drum kit in this movie. I'm so glad that got me by surprise. I didn't hear anything about that. I was like, oh, I I forgot about it until it was happening. And then I was like, oh, yeah. But like, I know the movie's called Aquaman. And like, obviously, you have to spend like a little bit of time underwater. But I think this movie spends way too much time underwater because i do think there there are points where the movie does sort of work for me i think like in sicily maybe not the action of the sicily scene because i thought that was kind of boring and it was just the same like oh like watch people like knock over those like orange whatever they call stucco tiles or something yeah from people from the roof but like i thought like um her being introduced to life on land Mm -hmm. it's a it's a cliche we've done it so many times before but it's tried and true. It works mm-hmm. to see these these people from other you know races or species rather and cultures introduced to our you know life on land. It's always fun and interesting. There's a million possibilities, and I thought they did some fun stuff with this one, with her like messing with the the fountain water mm-hmm. and like eating the roses that the guy gives to her. Right. Yeah. Um. Like. That stuff is cute and funny, and like it, it, it reminds me of so, like some of the better parts of like Wonder Woman too, um, and even like them going on like the adventure in like the Sahara Desert or wherever they are, mm-hmm. um, like that to me was like infinitely more interesting than anything that happened underneath the water, mm-hmm. and I, I I think that's just innately tied to it 
taking place like on land on the part of earth that we're you know familiar with at least cinematically it just seems like it's tied to us it's relatable it's got stakes that we can sort of understand whereas when they like go underneath the water it's just kind of like okay like i don't know what any of this is or where any of it relates to me as a viewer i don't know what i'm supposed to care about as much it's just it 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 turns everything upside down when they go in the water and like i know they have to spend part of the movie there but i don't know they could have taken a page out of like wonder woman's book where like wonder woman you know establishes the what are they the amazons the amazon warriors right they like they established that society for a good like 15 minutes in the beginning of the movie and i don't know if they even come back to it at the end like it's just sort of to establish who wonder woman is and then we take Wonder Woman and put her in the real world. They do the same thing in Thor, in the first Thor. Mm-hmm. They establish Thor on uh, whatever the place that he lives, I cannot remember. And then we put him on Earth, and then we watch those scenarios unfold. And I feel like that's what Aquaman could have been, um, but it just wouldn't have been the lead, you know, the main character doing it. It would have been the supporting right. character, um, Amber Heard, but it still would have been as effective. DC loves that like imagery of like, a younger version of the hero training on a beach. Yeah. You know, like they did that same exact thing with Wonder Woman. And I, I also feel like there's Wonder Woman imagery too, like when they're on the boat. And again, Jason Momo is kind of like, oh man, I shouldn't have killed, I shouldn't have let Manta's dad die. Kind of like they're, they're trying to forcibly make this relationship when there was almost zero chemistry between Jason Mm -hmm. Momoa and Amber Heard kind of where um, Wonder Woman, I I thought there, there was a lot of um, chemistry between, you know, uh, the the two love interest. I I think it, it, I think that was a major part of why that movie worked so well for me uh, personally. And I think think maybe other people too. It's, and I think maybe it's also just kind of like, these kind of traditionally attractive people as well i think they're also very charming but also jason momo like there was a point where like i just kind of like zoned out and then zoned back in and it was just kind of like watching jason momoa and amber heard and jason momoa it kind of looks fucking ridiculous with all of his like tribal tattoos and his body just kind of looks like littered kind of and his hair's long, and sometimes that's, you know, you can only do so much with, like, long hair. It kind of gets out of control sometimes. And then Amber Heard is in, like, this weird wig or, you know, dyed hair, kind of. And it's just kind of like, what am I watching? Like, I can't totally relate to these characters, or I can't totally yeah. get on board There's with There's something this about it that just feels like watching, like, two hot topic employees about to fuck oh each my. other. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. It looks, it looks, like, trashy. It kind of looks like what, like, you know, like what, like, a WWE relationship would look like. <laughs> just kind of like, <laughs> uh, like, well, and are, I just, I just think the, the, strong, quality, like, yeah. the quality of the actors is apparent too because i mean like chris pine like you know he may not be the type of actor who's like gonna win an oscar one -hmm. day but he's clearly a professional leading man and Mm -hmm. so when you put him even in like a supporting role he's gonna carry his weight you know tenfold and he did fine in wonder woman he was not the reason that wonder woman was a lackluster movie in my opinion um and then uh what's her fate i I don't remember the wonder woman actress anymore gal gadot yeah um she's got just so much like visual appeal um and is able to at least hold her own that like the two of them together it works and she's also she's fish out of water in that movie so you know if if she's not like totally the most charismatic it's fine she doesn't have to be um she's not the person who's comfortable um in the world in that movie whereas in like this like jason momoa is so clearly struggling as the leading man um and then like amber heard who is sort of the fish out of the water feels more comfortable as an actress than uh-huh. Jason Momoa does as an actor. And it just makes the whole like dynamic off um, in their sort of like chemistry where I just, yeah, I just, I really was not buying it at all. I don't think Jason Momoa knows how to be vulnerable enough yeah, as an actor, at least not in the Aquaman role. Like they, they try to sort of do like they have the one scene where 
um, he like just realizes that uh, she's like betrothed to Patrick Wilson Mm -hmm. and he gives like a kind of like jealous look like sort of vulnerable in that moment but it's it's not like super well done or well established either and yeah I don't know he just like he you would like like even if like The Rock like he may not know how to do vulnerable super well in movies and he hasn't really been asked right. to either but he can deliver a punchline and he can right. he has the charisma to be a leading man I don't think Jason Momoa has that I think he really no. is going to yeah. turn out to well, I shouldn't say this because I think because of how much money this made and a lot of that being based on his sex appeal, they're clearly going to keep casting him in leading roles, but I think he's going to do poorly in them. Maybe he'll be like The Rock and he'll get in enough of them that he'll just get enough practice to be a better leading man, but right. I don't know. I'm not super confident. I feel like a, he, he would be better served, um, maybe not financially, but to just like stick with like almost being like a character actor. <laughs> To, yeah. to play that character of the you know the meat-headed like surfer bro yeah and I don't, I don't think he has a lot lined up either i mean i think he's playing the like the lead character in the i, I think this was like a one of our teaser trailers at one point but like he's playing like the just cause um like a lead role like based off the video game or whatever uh-huh. um which he'd probably be perfect for or whatever i feel like they probably don't um, also leave a lot of time when you're like in these superhero contracts where they're oh, like well yeah. we, we, we might make another seven movies or we might not oh, right no no but you yeah. can't do anything else <laughs> no yeah and exactly and I, and I think the only other thing i mean it doesn't even have jason momoa like in aquaman 2 like it has james wan in aquaman 2 um so <laughs> i'm sure i'm sure they'll uh I don't know. I'm sure maybe 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 uh, baby bro Vince is gonna take <laughs> over for Aquaman too. <laughs> yeah, no. I, just just real quick, I was gonna say um, Amber Heard does fish out of water a whole lot better than Nicole Kidman. The whole, Nicole Kidman fish oh, out of God, water scene in painful. the beginning was so like. She, was she literally plays like, it like mute, like the Little Mermaid at first, and then she just starts talking, and we're like. Oh, yeah, and she can speak English. <laughs> right. She almost plays it like ape like too, which is fucking weird. Like yeah. it was just like so strange. But you yeah, know, yeah, it's just kind of like we've reached and to go back to um baby bro uh Vince uh <laughs> it's uh I, I think entourage um you know, in the excess of superhero movies that were in the late 90s and early 2000s i think it was satire to kind of make a movie about aquaman you know like yeah entourage is completely satire i think like that although i think it's almost it's almost pre all that saturation too because in entourage like i'm I'm watching the third season now which is in the throes of the whole aquaman storyline in that show and like they they have the episode such a great episode um despite being a really problematic show um and just a, a like archaic item of its time but they break spider-man one's record which right. is like yeah. comedically low compared to the records that were broken after that yeah <laughs> like the 2001 spider-man um so i, th- I think it was like sort of pre superhero saturation cuz like Spider-Man is 2001 I think Entourage was like 2004 2005 it came but, but out I, I I think they're satirically picking a character that I don't think will ever be that they think will actually ever be made into a movie you know Well I I would argue to some extent. I, I, I no, I think they're picking one yeah I think you're right that they're picking one that they don't think will be made into a movie I don't think it was satirical though I think it was more like not wanting to like if they if if he did a Batman movie, right. like I, I think that's just such a, a familiar um, IP that they were probably worried they couldn't do it justice mm-hmm. on HBO, and that it would feel too um, I don't know if uncanny is the word, but it would just kind of reek of being a fake thing. Whereas if they were you know like oh James Cameron and he's doing Aquaman like something that we haven't seen on the big screen before then whatever they put out would be fine and it wouldn't be we wouldn't be comparing it to you know superheroes that were already displayed on the big screen 
Right. That's um, just my that's just my point of view because I'm watching Entourage right now. It, it it doesn't seem like they were trying to do a lot of satire in that show. <laughs> there's there's a little touch of it i i don't know maybe maybe that's just uh what i can remember um i don't know i i also like remember like some sort of punchline of them being like uh maybe like comparing it to batman or something and then vince is kind of so out of touch with like something like batman begins or something that he's kind of like oh like what the joel schumacher or like the tim burton kind of you know i don't know i, for I think some it's reason, yeah i think that's in one of the first comic-con episodes when the one um or no it's when he's meeting with the the executives and he's trying to flex his knowledge of dc properties right okay yeah but um Anyway, enough, enough about Entourage. Yeah, I mean, to, to pick up on kind of the flexing on your DC knowledge of superheroes, I, I think one thing that I can like about this movie is the, you know, they don't have that whole, like, they don't feel like they have to tie in other superheroes, I, I think. I like, almost it, feel like the movie needed it. <laughs> Really? Because I I feel like well I mean at least it wasn't like Batman. I, just, I didn't Superman like any of the new, the like new stuff Wonder that Woman. was introduced in this. Like at least it wasn't like Wonder Woman sitting down at like a laptop and like double clicking on like superhero icons and being like mm, security footage from like upcoming superheroes. Hmm. You know, like it, I think mm-hmm. it was just kind of his own independent story, and I don't think. It, like Wonder Woman didn't really need that either. I mean, there's obviously a um, like a Batman cameo, I think, right? Was there a Batman cameo in Wonder Woman? Yeah, because there's in the present whole... time, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I don't think that needed this. If I kind of would have been like, eh, if we haven't, was... we haven't, we also haven't talked about how Ben Affleck is like officially out of the next Batman movie. Oh yeah, um, Batman I think was in and... Suicide Squad. Ben yeah. <laughs> and I think like, they're they're kind of just like pivoting to it being like a younger Batman now. So now right. it's like a establishing Batman movie. Like, oh god, like I just feel so bad for DC. Yeah. I and mean, I don't think they care cuz I mean they can put out like a shitty movie like this and as long as they market it globally and color correct it <laughs> to something that will be appealing globally. <laughs> It pulls in a an easy bill. Yeah, I just think Ben Affleck was like, eh, I don't know, I don't want to be Batman anymore. And they're like, we're being Suicide Squad. I'm like, you'll get to kiss Margot Robbie, and he's like, hell yeah. <laughs> well, I think that was before. Or, or do you mean the new Suicide Squad? Uh, I don't. What is no, the, the one we saw? Squad? Don't they have yeah. like a new one? Or I guess that's Birds of Prey that's coming. Right. Out. No, just just plain old suicide squad yeah i think that one was filmed so early because that was when they were trying to like front load this whole thing to catch up with marvel right. it mm-hmm. was probably before he realized what a train wreck the whole uh franchise was going to be yeah. yeah at least critically mm-hmm. i think they've all still made a decent amount of money i think he also just wanted to you know make out with margot robbie or something <laughs> i don't just know really hanging on to that point <laughs> <laughs> Listen, an Affleck fuck the babysitter, Mike. I don't know what you want me to do. <laughs> the, the nanny. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm trying to go a little deeper in the psyche. Um, yeah. Jeez. Um, How about that Birds of Prey teaser trailer? That oh, God. Just... It looks like a fan made, and I'm not even totally like against the idea. It just looks like a fan made kind of you know what it honestly looks better than whatever like the joaquin phoenix joker thing is that looks like i saw like a like a really recent like set picture of that and he just like literally looks like ronald mcdonald like just (laughs) and it's like the the stories from the set uh i've heard are just like horrendous like i don't know it just sounds like it's kind of just crazy what like a complete 180 we've done where like 
you come from i mean this is a much belabored point so i apologize for bringing it up again but like you you come from like you know the christopher nolan batman series Mm -hmm. you know and even before that like obviously dc was the king of comic book movies with the batman from before that um i guess it, it did sort of pendulum a little bit when uh the original spider-man came out um but like we just we we took christopher nolan's batman series in dc through that like so seriously and like i know at least for me like i did it took me a long time to really buy in or even slightly to like the whole thing that marvel was doing Mm -hmm. um when they started like really building their whole franchise out but like now you have like even though I didn't think that the teaser trailer for it was especially great, I am legitimately excited for Avengers Endgame, just based on how much I enjoyed Avengers Infinity War. And I think regardless of whether Infinity War ended where you expected it to end, mm. I think it does put you in this position where you are legitimately like, well, what the fuck are they going to do in Endgame to like get around this? Like It leaves some questions that we are all pretty much dying to have answered. Um Whereas, like, DC, I just could not give a shit about at all. Oh, yeah. And it's, like, there's a bunch of Marvel... Like, I'm almost, like, partially interested even in uh, Captain Marvel just by virtue of it being tied to and related to this, like, Avengers uh, Infinity War storyline. You know, even if it's just going to be establishing for, like, Endgame, it makes me want to see those movies so I will understand what's going on in Endgame. Whereas I, I really do not care about any of the things coming out under the DC umbrella now, including the new Batman movie. Right. And, um, I mean, the Batman movie even has somebody interesting attached to it. I, I can't remember who it is. Um, but it's somebody who made something that we like. Matt, Matt Reeves. I don't, I don't know, know what he's what, done, but that's the, the guy attached to it. Um, I have to look him up. Um, but yeah, no, I, I think, yeah, no, I, I, you know, I think I've always liked, uh, you know, Marvel comics a little more, but I, I want to see DC succeed and everything. Um, but it is, I, I, they tried to rush into it too quickly. They wanted that like Avengers money too quickly or they, they wanted that kind of like, I don't know, just that combat like that compilation of like superheroes like all together and i think that's like the batman versus superman i think was the beginning of the end it's like it was just like too much too fast and it was just kind of like you look like you look at movies like this like aquaman i think if this came out i would i would and i would i mean we know how much we disagree about that movie but i would i would still argue against that point just because i think that batman and superman are just such canonically canonically um well-established characters and just familiar that like they're not like aquaman where part of the problem with like you know some of those characters showing up in like justice league is that they didn't have a movie beforehand or like you know even wonder woman who you know is pretty iconic but still felt kind of thrown into batman versus superman Mm -hmm. like i would agree with maybe her part in it but i feel like you know we we know batman we know superman like because they've been so overdone in movies that you didn't necessarily need a standalone Batman movie or a standalone Superman movie, although we did have one for Superman before having a crossover. Right. I'd I'd love to see them further, you know, develop those characters like they did Iron Man before you have kind of the, well, yeah, I would say that was maybe part of the problem with justice league was trying to do all that in one movie. Right. But I, I, yeah, and not having the patience to be like, well, let's just do a flash movie. And mm-hmm. let's make it really good so that people, you know, will want to come to Justice League because we've done all these like solo movies for these characters and they love all of them. Mm-hmm. And, they, and they don't even need to do all of them because, you know, we never got a solo Black Widow movie. We never got a solo Hawkeye movie and Avengers still did fine. Right. Um, but yeah, let's let's. um. I I can't think of anything else I'd say about (coughs) Aquaman per se. It's just the whole thing is so strange. Like especially, (laughs) like I kind of start to laugh, but like also I like I was kind of engaged again. Like 
when, like, after that kind of Lovecraftian, um, out again, kind of beautiful flair scene that I, I think was, uh, had a pretty amazing visual element. I also do think the scene in Italy was kind of this, um, I think it went on for a really long time, but I think, like, it was one of the better action set pieces that we've seen, uh, this year in movies. Um, I think, like, we saw some, but, you know, we saw, uh, what's her name? Um, uh, the Amber Heard character, and then it would, like, zoom out, and you would see, like, Jason Momoa, and I, I think it was, like, this kind of, like, well-constructed action set piece in Italy, um, and, uh, I, I don't know, I, I kind of enjoyed it, kind of didn't, <laughs> but, um, um, but anyway, uh, they go into this fucking, like, Land of the Lost kind of center of the earth deal, and um surprise surprise you know they've been talking so much about how nicole kidman is dead uh, oh my god my mom's dead because of you and, and every time her who, who's the, the per is it willem dafoe every time so who's yeah. like you don't know that <laughs> oh right yeah yeah um or the the father even uh says that a lot too yeah maybe that's um, the one who keeps repeating it yeah uh, but obviously, yeah, she's alive. What a surprise! Um, but and she's anyway. kind of designed just like uh, uh, Michelle Pfeiffer from Ant Man. Oh, yeah, most definitely. Except Michelle Pfeiffer, kind of they they do like digital aging on her, and they just kind of um, like. I think Michelle Pfeiffer is also just uh, actually older. Right. Yeah. They they just have uh, Nicole Kidman in some like weird kind of like halloween store like long white wig like it's it's just it doesn't look good either um and then uh yada 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 like they're very conveniently near this cave um again they're in fucking dinosaur land which is crazy they don't even really concentrate on that whatever um anyway the cave has the kind of sword in the stone MacGuffin or whatever and uh, apparently she's tried to get it multiple times and then uh, Jason Momoa goes in it because he's one true king but he also goes in there and um, oh god uh, what, what's it called I was I was uh, cracking up because I had read uh, an article by uh, Nate Jones uh, at Vulture uh, and he was talking about well the article's titled, I'm Obsessed with Julie Andrews Voicing a Racist Sea Monster in Aquaman. <laughs> and it's about how Julie Andrews, the original Mary Poppins, uh, chose not to be in Mary Poppins Returns, but decided to be like a racist sea monster in Aquaman. You know, Wait, I was like, I was near sleep at this point in the movie. Okay. What, what, was, what was the racist part of that character? Um, it's racist is, uh, I mean, it's uh, yeah, obviously he's being funny, it's, but I don't even remember the, anything of right. that context it, it's, in it. I, I guess it, it is essentially racist. It's it's racist in the way that Harry Potter is racist, where they'll use like the word like mud blood or something. Um, <sighs> Julie Andrews is very upset that um, uh, uh, Aquaman is of you know he's of both like land oh, yeah, and he's... sea. Um, kind okay, of. Okay, yeah, I remember now. Julie Andrews kind of plays like this kind of small character. Um, but uh, anyway, uh, it's it's such like a goofy scene because um, what's it called? She just um, the character is kind of like talking and she says like this whole monologue. Um, this like giant crab whatever creature. Or I don't even know what it is. Um, but anyway, Jason Momoa is like, she's like, you'll never be worthy of it. And Jason, or um, what's it called? Uh, Aquaman's like, yeah, yeah, whatever. I know I'll never be worthy of it, but I, I have something to do. And she's like, wait, you can understand me? Yeah. And it's like, it's really weird. And it's just kind of like also a weird thing that she doesn't know that 
he doesn't understand her before because like she goes over she's talking moment. yeah right her. yeah 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 like she's like has she said this monologue to the hundreds of other men who like tried to get that and then also those hundreds of other men didn't have the map to this place uh, it was just like so confusing it was like well, well and like not only what? that, like he, he he gives this sort of I don't remember the specifics of it, but he kind of has mm-hmm. like a an, a pseudo intelligent response to her that like mm-hmm. I kind of thought was like okay, like she's she's gonna buy that, like he's gonna sort of win her over, where even though he's not a pure blood or whatever, she's looking for um his sort of like his humility is what's going to like win him over. But then he ends up closing out that speech with like, well, if that's not enough for you, then screw you. Fuck <laughs> or whatever you. you. Fuck yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, so it was he, just like, a, it was just a weird like button on something that didn't need a punchline. Yeah. So then he pulls the sword from the stone, which is really just this like trident from, you know, this dead king's hands. And then he just kind of magically is wearing the, you know, the original kind of Aquaman costume and he emerges from the cave. And then we cut to the kind of like Lord of the Rings style battle. And then all of a sudden, I didn't realize at the time, but he shows back up with the Julie Andrews like monster like that's yeah. what he brings in the battle I kind of thought he just I don't know invented that with his staff or something I, I well because just... they only show her didn't... tail when right. she's talking to him but she's like huge and I also thought that was a weird decision unless they're related somehow but like yeah like they make this whole MacGuffin out of the the trident that he's trying to get the entire time but what sort of really sways the battle um seemed to be like that big ass julie andrews monster showing up like definitely part of it is like he's able to control the the sharks and stuff and he like has them all like attack their owners and all the ones that are like riding it but i don't know i thought that was weird to like have them be focused on oh we need to get the trident we'll never beat him without the trident you need the trident you need the trident and then have him also show up with this like extra ammunition and not really to focus on like the the real power of the trident in that battle scene. Yeah. And then it is it is just kind of like I don't know, he wants to um fight like his, you know, his half brother on land kind of and it's I don't know. The 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 entire fight all scene is kind of underwhelming. Um, and again, um, it's one of those things, um, or somebody says at some point, it's kind of like, oh, we want all of Atlantis to kind of, uh, witness this. That's the only way they'll trust you as the king. And they never really go back to that kind of like gladiator stadium where like the people can see, you know, it's just, well, they do have all the, all the people like surface on their respective animals to watch them fighting on top of whatever they're fighting on some kind of ship or something. Right. But that, Cause they that do, they the, do bring, they do bring that line back. Like that, that is, that is like, like a kind of like a scattered race, like military kind of, you know? Yeah. Like, I don't it's know. It's not the people. I, it, it's, it's not the, fighters. the, yeah. Uh, it's, I feel like it's not like the people he's going to be leading kind of, I, I was kind of hoping they'd bring something like that where it'd be like, <gasps> I heard our king is fighting, you know, the, you know, the <laughs> that one really awkward scene in the, in the, the gladi- the gladiator scene where like the audience like goes like dead silent. And then, ah! <laughs> you know, what seen him talk- from that fucking trailer. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's, a, it, it's like the longest pause ever. It's so awful. Also like, uh, uh, like one sort of like last point, cause we do really have to wrap up here, but uh, yeah. like, Patrick Wilson has this like weird acting decision that he makes. Maybe it's a directing choice, but we're like, Hey, like just the, the, the movement underwater is so goofy. They really do not make it look supernatural um, at all. Um, like they're just kind of like floating around and they don't look like people who 
are very comfortable underwater. Like they kind of just like bob around. It doesn't seem like their natural environment underwater. But like there's so many instances in this movie where like he'll be sort of like bobbing around like above the floor of whatever underwater thing they're in. And he'll just like start screaming. You know what I'm talking about? And like he has like the weakest, most like boring scream ever. It just seems like such a weird decision all the time because he, yeah, he doesn't have like a good screaming voice and there never really seems to be like a, a real reason why he's screaming. Mm -hmm. Like besides just like to communicate with these people as like their king. I don't know. I just thought that was like super goofy. There's so many things that this movie does that it like does not get out of its own way with some of its aesthetic choices. Yeah, because like even like if, if a movie is going to be like, uh, you know, sort of weak emotionally, um, and you know, thin on plot, it can make up with that if it's going to be super compelling visually or aesthetically. And I don't think this movie does that either, which is why I think it's one of the worst movies of the year to sort of pivot into our ratings. Yeah, there's uh in like the red letter media review they kind of keep cutting to like this shot of like behind the scenes of just like regular him like in front of like a green screen being like atlantis rise up (laughs) it's just like (laughs) it's so awkward just him in like a studio kind of like saying that (laughs) just uh he's such a weird choice for a villain he looks i don't know i don't know why he keeps getting the types he, of roles that he does. Cause I do think Patrick Wilson is great in the right type of role. I think he has this look, um, that maybe like, like if you're not like listening to him talk, like he looks like he could be like a leading man in something, but, but really like he has a more timid presentation to everything he does. And like his best roles have been like the opposite of what he sort of gets cast as now. Like I think he's I think he's really great in the Watchmen movie because Night Owl is this sort of like nerdy fucking superhero. Right. He's like the yeah. goody two shoes and he's in contrast to like the comedian or Rorschach or stuff like that. And I thought he really captured that character well. He's also really good. He's in um the movie version of The Phantom of the Opera. Mm-hmm. And he's like the the sort of again, like the goody two shoe shoes in contrast to Gerard Butler as the Phantom, mm-hmm. um, who ends up sort of like losing his love interest to this guy with like a messed up face who's like a criminal. Um, he's great in roles like that, I think, because he has this sort of like, yeah, like this timid nature and he's, you know, he can play like the, the good guy who, you know, like he, he doesn't play sort of like the, like the, the frat bro good guy or like, rich pompous type good guy he, he plays like the just like the, the timid like oh yeah like a patrick wilson and <laughs> he also thing, does you know? he also does look like but he he, 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 lo- he, he, he looks, looks like, like the that. traditional aquaman you know like yeah when he first appears on screen you're like oh that's kind of like the aquaman i would expect kind of especially in the costume they have him in i, I don't know it is i think that's part of his problem is because he has such a like a square jawed face he looks like a traditional you know like leading man from like the 80s or 90s or something like mm-hmm. that um but it's just his voice and it, where his acting strengths lie are not there so like to put him in like a lead villain role was like super confusing to me and then he just kind of performs exactly as expected like he just can't handle it he's not he's not like ominous enough he's not like threatening enough right. yeah i don't know i think he's a good actor in the right role but he keeps getting horribly miscast yeah no i agree uh but yeah let's uh let's get into some ratings for aquaman sure uh let me read rotten tomatoes on review aggregator rotten tomatoes the film holds an approval rating of 65 percent based on 334 reviews with an average rating of six out of ten the website's critical consensus reads aquaman swims with its entertainingly ludicrous tide that's one too many water puns so far (laughs) offering up cgi superhero spectacle that delivers energetic action with emphasis on good old-fashioned fun yeah i don't i don't agree with that Usually, Rotten Tomatoes is pretty on, but... 
I, I mean, I, at the end of the day, I, um, maybe on the other hand, was tired, but was, I was never totally bored. Like, maybe I was bored during, like, longer fight scenes, and maybe they need, like, a little less of that, and I could have definitely cut this into a shorter movie. Maybe two hours and some change, you know? It didn't need to be two and a half hours. But I think I was thoroughly entertained uh, by this movie. I felt, at times, I definitely felt some sort of, um, you know, I felt anxious <laughs> for Aquaman. I... I, I did care about him, um, even though I, I, you know, I wasn't crazy about, you know, the actor himself. I think there was something happening here that was just overall fun, and it wasn't Rampage, or it wasn't Skyscraper. I know those are our two go-tos for this year, but those were just terrible movies. Um, I don't know. Um, I still don't know what I want to rate it, though. I mean, I know. Do you want me to go first? Or? Yes, please. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to keep it pretty quick. I, go for I, it. Yeah. I had low expectations for this movie. Uh-huh. Um, or I guess I should phrase that differently. I, I sort of thought this movie would be bad, but then, like, it, it started raking in so much money that I was like, well, maybe that's, like, my superhero bias, mm-hmm. and maybe this can actually just, like, be entertaining on a surface level so i like tried to go into it with like those expectations of like it's not going to be a marvel movie it's not even going to be a good dc movie but it, it's going to be entertaining on some level at least and maybe it'll be like a fun sort of train to to watch go off the rails i don't right. think it, it was any of that i was legitimately bored for a lot mm-hmm. of it and when i was sort of like tuned in it was just to sort of like gawk at how goofy looking everything was and i don't know, like i just i don't think there was like a, a a like speck of good acting in this movie i don't think there was a speck of good directing i don't think there was a speck of good writing i don't think there was a speck of good production design i just i found so such little of value in this movie like like me watching the trailer i thought all right this is going to be kind of bad this will probably be like a a one and a half to a two finger type movie it'll be below average you know, it, it, it'll be something we can criticize. I didn't expect it to be as bad as it really turned out to be, where it, it wasn't even really, like, fun to watch it just fail. It was just boring, and it kind of put me to sleep. And I don't know. I, I didn't think the action was particularly exciting. Like, I think it was, mm-hmm. like, downright goofy at times. Like, especially right. that, like, that first fight with, like, Nicole Kidman and the, like, Power Rangers foot soldiers that break through the main lighthouse to try and uh, kidnap her back. Um, so I think I'm going to give it a half finger. I'm like thinking of other movies that I rated this year, just because that's sort of how we do things like on the, the scale of this year, at least. And like, I think I gave Bohemian Rhapsody half a finger and that was sort mm-hmm. of bad for a lot of like emotional reasons, but there was still definitely, I think maybe more entertainment value in Bohemian Rhapsody than there was in this. Right. Like, even yeah. if, it, if it was maybe sort of uh, thinner entertainment, you know, like just enjoying Queen's music um, mm-hmm. or watching, you know, Rami Malek sort of try to struggle to carry that movie. Um, right. So I don't think I could rate this higher than Bohemian Rhapsody. So I think <laughs> I'm going to have to give it a half finger. I, I also don't think even like if I hadn't rated Bohemian Rhapsody, I don't think I could go higher than like one finger for this. I just, I found so little of redeemable value in this, you know, like I was saying before, right. it, it would have been great if I could just enjoy this on like an aesthetic level, but I think the design choices were weird. I think it has some of the worst production design. I think the colors are goofy. And again, I know that's not for me, but I, I can only rate it on my enjoyment and value valuation of the movie. I can't rate it for, you know, people in China and Australia and wherever else this movie is being released and doing well. Oh, definitely. Right. So, half finger for me. All right. Um, yeah, again, I don't think there's too much that I haven't uh, brought up 
there's a lot of fucking surprise explosions in this movie. Oh my god, I, think, I had that I note written could, down. I'm so glad you brought that up. <laughs> I think we could do without some of those. I think sometimes they didn't know what to do after quiet scenes and maybe just like <laughs> that was the yeah, that was their transition was explosion yeah. and oh these people are attacking. I literally that was the only time I laughed in this movie was like after like the third or fourth one of those. I just laughed out loud like Jesus Christ like right, cuz it scares yeah. you. But it's also just like, oh my god, like we we just did that. Like find another way mm-hmm. to transition to a new scene. Um it, but yeah, overall I don't know. I think this by you know just by the skin of the, its teeth is a fresh uh you know, score on Rotten Tomatoes. Um, I think I, th- the only way I know how to like diagnose this is just like, this is the first like tangible <laughs> evidence we have of just true superhero fatigue where it's kind of like, I'm like, people aren't even really taking like a hot take of kind of like, you know, superhero movies might be bad, dude. Like, it's just kind of like, I don't know, man, I guess it was good. Like, I guess, I I don't know. Like it's mm-hmm. just like there's so many of them now. Sure, I guess this was entertaining. That's kind of where I'm coming from. I'm so lost in this fucking world of superhero movies, and my head's spinning from just like how I I don't want any of these movies really. <laughs> but if I have to rate them, I mean, you know, I I give fucking Rampage a two. I give The Predator a two. I gave uh, Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom a 2. I think I'm going to give this movie a 2. It it kept my attention the entire time. I think there's impressive visual effects in this movie. Um I think it's it's really it's really loaded with plot points. I think it's a very boiler point plot. I, I don't know. I I think if you want to go to the movie and you just want to be like I was while I was watching this I was like wish I was high or something like I, I like I feel like I can really like fully appreciate the scope of this movie I kind of get it like it's just kind of like eh, I, I, don't, I don't know it's just kind of all superhero movies are truly blending into each other at this point I don't know um I I don't know honestly I saw the trailer for this movie I had the opposite effect I saw the trailer for this movie and thought I was going to like give this like a zero or something, and then I th- I think like maybe I hyped myself up for how bad it was going to be. That I sat down and I was like, "This isn't bad. Mm-hmm. It's not terrible. It's kind of like the Mummy from like last year or something. It's just kind of like he's just kind of like globe trotting and he's kind of whatever. Uh, you know, I have a million complaints with this movie. I I I just. I don't want to like rate it on too harsh of a scale, like especially when this is the year when we've seen Rampage and, you know, the new Jurassic Park movie and Predator and all these other movies, you know, the Meg and everything. It's just kind of like, I don't know, this kind of just fits right in. This is just, just as bad. And I don't (coughs) want to say it's any worse. Uh, Yeah. So, gosh, that's the most depressing two-finger review I've ever given anything. <laughs> uh, probably not, because I've given Rampage two fingers. I, I, I'd have to listen back to that. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, no, I, I, I think I, I ended up enjoying myself, uh, even though, I don't know, it's not, it's not a great movie, but it's no, def- here. Definitely not. And, it's, and it's, it's just under, you know, the okay, which is two and a half i'd say it's just under okay i don't think i don't think you'll be wasting your money going to see this my gosh you'll get enough time to watch it but uh <laughs> just yeah. by sheer minutes alone it might be worth the uh yeah you know have more value than other you're movies. gonna get you're gonna get some goddamn bang for your buck and it, apparently i think this might most... not be the type of bang for your buck you're hoping for right yeah it's also like i think this is the most expensive movie made this year or something um yeah i don't know and that shows and even though it's it's kind of all over the place it's still i don't know to some degree it's enjoyable 
and my god, I still, I don't know, compared to a lot of DC movies we've watched, like, we just came off of Justice League, man. <laughs> yeah. It, it didn't have very, it wasn't held to very high standards uh, by the time I walked in on this. So, yeah, I'm going to leave it at two fingers. I'd rather watch Justice League, though, honestly. Oh, no, I, I don't think I could do that again. I think Justice League at least had, like, the sort of built-in safety net of some characters that, um, even if these portrayals of them aren't the best, I just care about more than Aquaman. And, like, I don't know, like, I mean, we can rip on, like, Ben Affleck all day, but, like, he's not bad as Batman. He's at least interesting to watch in that role, I thought. And then, you know, you have Wonder Woman coming off of her great movie as well, uh, critically speaking. I don't know. Yeah, I would. Right, yeah. A hundred times over, rather watch. I, I'll, I'll, I probably will at some point rewatch Justice League. I, I will never rewatch this movie. I won't rewatch any of them. <laughs> <laughs> also fair. Anyway, so uh, two fingers and a half finger will come to 1.25, which will round down to one finger for us here at the podcast. That's one of our bigger uh, sort of valleys between our scores. One oh, and a yeah. half fingers. I'm looking back to see when the last time we were that far apart. I think that was on Solo. Yeah, because I gave that a three. You gave that one and a half. Yeah, and then this... right before that for blockers, which you gave a three and I gave one and a half. Right, yeah. Yeah, this year has been a weird year for movies. Um, um, I'm ready to put this year to bed. Same. Although we, we could possibly be closing it out, or at least in, in our sense, uh, on a high note, because we're going to review uh, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse next right. week. And I've heard... Which we've only heard good abs- things about. Absolutely you know? only good things about. Uh, and it's it's like pretty much swept all the precursor awards and then even all like the individual awards within those precursor awards um for uh best animated feature Mm -hmm. at the oscar so uh, if i'm sure of anything it's that it's going to win the oscar for best animated feature it would be a huge upset if it uh didn't win right yeah but yeah i'm I'm kind of excited to see that now just because of how much the hype has been up there like i was kind of uh, we'll get into it on the review next week but I, I was kind of weirded out by it at first because i had this whole fear of like well it's gonna do really well and then we're just gonna get nothing but animated superhero movies on top of all the live action ones and it's just gonna increase the superhero fatigue um but it is chris lord and phil miller right I think one of them has a part in writing it. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Um, Seems like yeah, it'll be nope. fun. We'll I, I think I said I think I said that during our live episode, which you can uh, tune into in uh, two weeks. But um, uh, what's it called? I kind of was like, oh, it's it's Marvel versus DC. It's you know Spider Man or Spider Verse versus uh, Aquaman. I think Aquaman's gonna fucking flop. And, you know, and then we are going to see something like Spider-Verse set this new, like, box office record. And then we're going to see, like, this influx of uh, animated Marvel movies, which we still might. But then, you know, Aquaman just kept doing numbers. It was at number one (laughs) at the box office forever. And I think Spider-Verse fell off pretty quickly, even though it is still in theaters. Um, yeah but i do i mean even if it doesn't make as much money i think the fact that it's going to win an oscar oh yeah is kind of gonna kind of put like blood in the water for these like superhero studios definitely because it like i mean that the animated feature category is kind of thin in terms of there's you know whatever like pixar movie came out whatever like disney movie came out and then whatever like DreamWorks movie came out, and then if like Illumination does a movie that year, as well, and then usually there's like uh, the fifth one ends up being like it is this year, like some kind of like Japanese studio, either mm-hmm. if Studio Ghibli puts out a movie or something. Like there's just kind of like all those, and like if if the again I don't want to spoil too much from next week's review, but just while we're talking, but like it, it, if they continue to put out like quality animated superhero movies perennially 
then I feel like we're going to see those also perennially at the Oscars just because of that thin field for animated because they're so hard to make. Like, right. You know, there, yeah. there was really only like six or seven contenders for the field itself. Five of them are going to get nominated. If they just we'll start see. throwing, you know, enough money into that, they're going to be perennially nominal nominated as well. I would think. Yeah. And you know, and we, we could talk about this next um, episode and everything too, but you know, how much does a studio care about Oscar nominations as opposed to big box office scores? Like, mm-hmm. uh, you know, like Pixar does and, you know, like um, Illumination does um, where I don't think uh, Spider-Verse did nearly as well as either of those two. Uh, but yeah, it, it still might be something that they look into and uh, yeah, but I mean, if they, if they make so much money from the live action ones, then they might have the money to sort of. I mean, like I don't think Spider Man lost money. Oh, and right, like, no, no, not at all. Yeah, I think if if they see an avenue to just be like, oh, we can just kind of squeak in here and grab some like critical mm-hmm. acclaim to go along with all the 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 big bucks that we have. Like, I don't think mm-hmm. any studio doesn't want to win an Oscar. Oh, because like, no, it's yeah, it's definitely. just like it's clout within your industry. Mm-hmm. on top like i mean obviously they've proven they can make money with the live action movies if they can get some actual hardware to go along with it that it's only gravy mm-hmm. but anyway um let's just uh let's let's plug the handies and then we'll get out of here yeah definitely i think so uh so the handy awards uh the nominations are out now if you are sort of new to hearing about the handies there are annual film awards ceremony and we've we've got you know awards for most of the big categories like best picture, best director, best actor, best actress, yada yada. Um, and we've also got some podcast awards too, so you can vote for best host between me and Joe, or best guest if there was a, a guest you really enjoyed this year, or best episode. And we'll award all of those at our ceremony. Uh, you can check out all the nominees at howmanyfingerspodcast dot com. And the best part is that we nominated everybody, but you guys get to choose the winner. So you can vote using hashtag give a handy to followed by the name and category of the intended handy recipient on any of our social media. Uh, we're, we're, we're tracking that hashtag. So pretty much anywhere you use it that we have access to it, we'll count your vote and uh, you can have a, a hand in giving a handy to somebody. So uh, definitely participate. You can kind of like, give a big fuck you to the Oscars for all the stuff that they didn't nominate and won't end up giving awards to anyway. Uh, cause a lot of that stuff is nominated by us, uh, and is available there. Uh, so voting is available until Monday, February 11th. Uh, and then we're going to have the ceremony premiering on YouTube Saturday, Saturday, February 23rd. I think we're going to do the like YouTube premiere option. So you should be able to like watch it, like live sort of, yeah. I guess. Live, yeah. uh, <laughs> uh, we'll see how that goes. And you can like comment with people as you're watching it. Should be cool. I'm excited to try that for the first time. Uh, yeah, definitely. So yeah, that's the handies. Check it all out. How many fingers podcast.com and check out a review of Spider-Man into the spider verse next week. I think that's about it. Yeah. I think that's everything. All right. We will see you guys next week. Later. Bye.